So this lecture will continue with cancer. So the first human oncogene identified was the homologue of RAS-H oncogene of what's known as the Harvey sarcoma virus. There are three members of the RAS family, uh, RAS-H, RAS-K, and RAS-N, and are the oncogenes most frequently encountered in human uh, tumors. Now, mutations of the oncogenes maintain then the RAS proteins constitutively in the active state. So the oncogenic RAS proteins don't respond then to uh, gap activity, and that results then in decreased uh, GT, or that would result in GTPase activity decreased. Many cancer cells have abnormal chromosome structure. Uh, including translocations, duplications, and deletions. Again, these can also lead to generation of oncogenes. So oncogene proteins play many roles in uh, growth factor stimulated pathways. You talked about these uh, in another chapter, guys. In the ERK pathway, oncoproteins include polypeptide growth factors, receptors, intercellular signals, and transcription factors. So this is something that we covered already, but just as a reminder, guys, uh, if you stimulate uh, a growth factor receptor uh, with uh, EGF, epidural growth factor, um, that will stimulate or phosphorylate the tyrosine kinases here. RAS gets recruited to the membrane that recruits up RAF, then MEX, so these get scaffolded together. ERK is going to be activated then at the end, these are MAP kinases, and ultimately translocated to the nucleus, and you get transcription activation that will occur. So many oncogenes will encode the growth factor receptors, usually, again, those tyrosine kinases, and we've talked about that before. Now, the PI3 kinase, uh, AKT signaling pathway, normally prevent apoptosis of many cells. So the genes then that encode those uh, act as oncogenes in both retroviruses and in human uh, tumors. So tumor suppressor genes, and we've talked about P53 before, they normally inhibit cell proliferation and tumor development. The first one discovered, retinoblastoma, um, was uh, noted in children, and it's an inherited type of childhood eye tumor. About 50% of the affected children um, of, of children of an affected parent develop retinoblastoma. So it's a single dominant gene then that confers susceptibility to tumor development. So again, these are some of the tumor suppressor genes, guys. On this side here, you may have heard of the BRCA genes. Uh, this is a marker for breast cancer. Here, P53 we talked about before. Um, and this shows the type, different types of cancers then. Uh, this one here, uh, INC4, actually has been shown in melanomas, long brain, etc. Now, P50C3 uh, was the second tumor suppressor gene identified. Again, uh, it's believed that mutations of P53 play a role in about 50% of all cancers, so this is a very important tumor suppressor. Uh, the BRCA genes are responsible for some inherited types of breast and ovarian cancer. Uh, there's stability genes that maintain the integrity of the genome, so if there's mutations, then the uh, cells become unstable and tumors can actually begin to form. Now, again, multi-step process. You just don't go from 0 to 100 or from stage 1 to stage 4 metastasis. Uh, there's a lot of genes that have to be uh, mutated or damaged along the way in different processes that take place. So <clears throat> a lot of the work then now is large-scale uh, genome sequencing, and we talked about uh, next-gen sequencing earlier in the semester, where you can look at several thousand genes all at one time uh, through PCR methods. So uh, there's also other different types of uh, PCR-based 
uh, analysis that can be done as well. So there's about 150 mutated genes that have been identified in tumors, uh, but only subsets are involved in cancers of a specific type. So some of the ones that are usually found in colon cancer, for instance, would be RASK, PI3K, oncogenes, uh, and then APC and P53 tumor suppressor genes. Now, breast cancers have mutations also in the P53 and PI3 kinase. Now, why uh, do I bring this up? Well, these are markers. Uh, we can actually look at those. Uh, unfortunately, it's not cheap. It costs a lot of money to have screening done with this. But if you do have those mutations present, uh, again, it could provide a potential therapeutic target. Now, different mutations can affect the same signaling pathway. So, for instance, in colon cancer, you could have RASK or BRAF that both of these or either one of them can stimulate ERK. So let's say this one's normal, that one's mutated, or is going to be activated. Let's say BRAF's normal and RASK is mutated, or is actually going to be stimulated. So basically what this wheel, it's like wheel of fortune, around and around and around you go. All right, so what happens, guys, these are different ways that... Uh, you can lead to cell survival and what's going to happen to the cells. So on this side here, guys, these are some of the different pathways or genes involved. Same thing on this side, uh, notch, hedge, hedgehog, etc. Those can actually lead to what the cell fate, uh, fate is actually going to be. So um, best way to deal with cancer, prevent it. Um, stop it from happening in the first place. So there's a lot of uh, cancers that people would not get, uh, but uh, let's say you're someone who likes to bake in the sun. That could lead to certain types of skin cancers. Uh, people who smoke, people who uh, do other unhealthy types of things, uh, cancer can develop that way. Um, second best is early detection. So you should be getting regular checkups, regular treatments, and things like that. Be in tune with your body. Basically, it, it tells you a lot. So you know your body better than anybody else does. Um, they can be cured a lot of times by localized treatment before they metastasize. So a lot of surgeries, uh, a lot of the immunotherapies now are definitely helping to uh, keep tumors from proliferating. And they're more directed. So the normal types of chemotherapies, guys, sadly leaves patients pretty ill, and it doesn't just target the uh, cancer themselves. Um, again, some people may, let's say, for instance, a woman finds out she has uh, breast cancer in one of her breasts, she may choose to have a mastectomy on both sides. Um, and that's, again, it's a very personal thing. No one knows until they're in that position exactly what they do. Also, if you find out that you do have these mutations, maybe you want it, uh, again, let's say a, a man finds out that he may be pre predisposed to prostate cancer, he may decide to have a prost uh, prostatectomy, et cetera. So these things are available. Um, again, there's drugs out there now that stop angiogenesis. That's really cool because they can't get fed, so they eventually start to shrivel up. Other types block the proliferation of the cells, and they're less toxic now to normal cells than they used to be. Uh, and some target the gene itself. So again, because our proto-oncogenes that are normal uh, to us can also be affected, we have to be a little bit better with how we're selecting those particular genes to be targeted. Again, these are just some. Uh, when I went to the Moffitt meeting back, it seems like a long time ago, February, doesn't it, guys? Uh, but when I went to that, this list is a lot longer now. So a lot of these immunotherapies have gotten so much better even since then. So monoclonal antibody treatments, again, immunotherapy, this is the way we're going now, targeting a lot of the surface receptors 
either inside or outside. Both of these hit receptors. Herceptin is one that's been used a lot in breast cancers, guys. Uh, and uh, EGF receptor um, ag antagonists are also been used a lot in so well, for several years, I'd say over 10 years at least. And then we have small inhibitors of oncogenes that are out there. And please take a screenshot of this, guys. And again, if you look at the number of cases of uh, leukemias that have gone on, so here's your incidence. And with some of these new therapies, look at in a 14-year time span how the number of cases is going down. So it's showing then that uh, the mortality from a lot of these cancers is definitely going down with our, our newer therapies. So again, um, there's a couple of different drugs that will actually block the EGF receptor that are out there. Now, one of the things uh, I want you to be aware of, guys, is we have what's known as oncogene addiction. That's when you have sensitivity of tumors to inhibition of activated oncogenes. So what happens is you have proliferation and survival of the tumor cells, and they become dependent on that oncogene. Now, normal cells, what happens is the alternative signaling pathways can compensate if one is blocked. This is a huge problem. So our cells are designed such that if you block one pathway, another one will compensate for it. So we, we've talked about a lot of pathways, guys. I don't want to give you a bigger headache with it, but let's say you block the RAS pathway. Well, then maybe PI3 kinase is going to take over an NF-kappa B or whatever. So that's some of the hurdles that we have to overcome. So again, resistance can also occur, and that's something that we're, we're looking at uh, nowadays as well. So preventing... Basically, the best way to do that, and we're seeing that uh, in cancer as well as in treating viral infections and microbial infections, use a cocktail. Don't use just one. You can hit it at more than one spot, and it seems to be much more effective that way. So, again, uh, the dependence of cancer cells on mutationally activated oncogenes gives us promise that we can get these drug targets and drugs targeted to that uh, a lot better. So there's a lot of advances, again, that are going into cancer treatment. Oh, what's this? Oh, my goodness. Well, that kind of ends it for uh, my lectures for this semester, guys. Uh, this has been a different semester, that's for sure. Uh, I had this. Uh, actually, a student made this meme for me from my micro videos. They took screenshots, and little did I know that this would have a lot more meaning uh, in 2020 than it did back in 2015. Uh, I wish we would have been able to meet the way that we had wanted. I hope that these uh, little YouTube videos of the lectures have helped you guys, and I do look forward to uh, your presentation slides and summaries. And uh, I wish you all the best. I hope you're safe. I hope you're happy. And I will be in touch.